Welcome back. So today we're going to talk about the KZZSN Pro X. Um, similar to the KZZSTX, this is another new one, um, sort of redoing the original ZSN Pro, which was uh, a bit legendary. I mean, I still get tons of comments of people talking about, hey, I have a ZSN Pro looking to upgrade, what should I get? Um, so today we'll kind of talk about if this is a upgrade to the ZSN Pro X, or I mean a ZSN Pro, or something kind of slightly different. So this one came from the AK Audio Store on AliExpress. As I mentioned previously, they're having a sale this week, big 828 sale. So this one is going to drop a dollar um, starting on Monday. So do check that out. So um, if you're like me and you watch lots of video reviews of budget IEMs, you'll notice that Zpult put out um, a review of the ZSN Pro X and a graph that looked um, somewhat not like the original ZSN Pro at all. Um, the ZSN Pro was much more V-shaped, uh, maybe not as high here. I didn't actually go back and check exact numbers, but um, it's kind of hard to figure out exactly if that changed, but it definitely seems a little brighter to me. So to go from a V-shape to almost this, you know, neutral, balanced, linear shape um, seems kind of odd. Seems like an odd choice to me for the ZSN Pro, which was, you know, even more widely used than the ZST Pro. I mean, just a ton of people use a ZSN Pro, and I think they're used to that sound. So it seemed like an odd shape to really, or an odd thing to do to change it, what appeared to be, you know, quite radically, but... Um, it definitely doesn't sound nearly as different as it looks in the graph, so I will at least say that. So one thing I do want to know kind of right off the bat is they didn't kill that ZSN house sound. It still, it, it almost sounds V-shaped, almost. I mean, it's, it, it has this KZ fun engaging sound, and I think the speed of the new driver actually compensates for while this looks like a big drop from the original ZSN Pro in the bass level, when you listen to it, it's not nearly that different. There's quite a bit of bass, and sure, the level is brought down a little bit, but you know, it's not like they went to, it doesn't sound nearly as flat as it looks in the graph. So um, yeah, don't get too scared off by what the graph looked like. And I think even when Zipol kind of reviewed it, I think he he kind of said it's not it's not so radically different. Um, they just kind of tweaked it a little bit of the formula, and it just sounds a little different. But they didn't necessarily kill it with a flat, unengaging, boring sound. So that was good. So first thing I noticed was the vocals were much better, and I think I talked about this with the ZSTX as well. The vocals were better on that, and on the ZSN Pro X, I think they're even better because not only are they a little closer, a little more intimate, bigger, but they're more detailed. And um, so go check out Adele's Hello, and um, if you have a ZSN Pro, you know, do take note of the size of her voice right in the beginning. It's kind of tight, you know, right in the center, a little bit small, a little far away, a little recessed. Um, it doesn't quite sound as intimate, as close as it should. Um, kind of a V-shaped sound on a female vocal. Um, so, but do take note of, you know, kind of the edges of where that sound is. It's kind of a tight circle. And when you go to the Pro X, it's just kind of a bigger, fuller, closer in. That circle that you pictured on the ZSN Pro is now much bigger, um, fills the space better than the original ZSN Pro did. Um, and it's a little hard to tell about the details on Hello, but you definitely get a sense of the voice is now much fuller. So for details, check out Diana Krall's Body and Soul. And uh, it sounds great on you know a lot of IEMs. But the thing to take notice is in the first, like the first three lines, listen to the texture of her voice. Listen to all that texture in the middle of her voice. Not not so much the edges, not like you're hearing things in the background that you didn't hear before, but listen to all those tiny, you know, all that intonation in her voice in those first three lines. It's, it's actually quite different than the original ZSN Pro. Um, it sounds really good. I mean, it's kind of shocking how realistic it sounds for $19 IEM. Um, so they definitely did a lot of work there. 
um, on the details. So I think number two is kind of that big, if you're a vocal guy, um, you're not so much worried about having a, you know, the bass huge, you know, maybe you're not a bass head, maybe you didn't care if it was so boomy, um, but you really care about vocals, the ZSN Pro is probably going to be more um, in line with your preferences. So the brightness, um, so you kind of have this neutral with kind of a bump there, a boost in the treble. Um, so I pick Robin Schultz's headlights, and even today I was listening to it on the Z1, um, which is kind of bright as well, but not nearly as bright as the ZSN Pro X. Um, this song kind of takes up a level where I don't, like it all that much i think they probably should have left the trouble where it was i think i don't think anyone was screaming for more trouble on the zsn pro but um that song in particular i just happened to listen to it a lot and uh, thought that that one probably took it a notch higher than i would have wanted but you know you take the bass down push this up a little bit you just end up with a brighter signature and i think that's not so much that they took the treble too far too bright but um, it just overall has a brighter sound to it now. So bass, um, again, it's a little tighter, faster, a faster decay is, is sort of what you notice more. And I think part is the level came down a little bit. So the decay, I think just faster. So Robin Schultz's headlights, again, listen to the bass right in the beginning. He does, you know, this quick repetitive bass and you get a real sense of, you know, how tight that sound is around the bass, where the edges are. I mean, here, listen to that decay in between. Um, pretty nice. Um, you know, I think it's that was, if you're going to take away some bass, I think the speed of it, I think, compensated just a little bit for how much they bumped the level down. So it sounds better, even though you're probably hearing less of it than you did before. It's just more in line with the vocals. So I don't, I don't necessarily think that you know, flattening that out was necessarily a bad thing unless you were um, really a bass head guy. So Dead Mouse's strobe, where's the beat version? So I always look for the balance of the strings, the soaring strings, and the lower part of the strings, that bassy rumble, even in the horns, you hear some of those later. Um, I always look for that, you know, are those two in balance? Is, are the strings soaring as high as the bass is kind of low? And uh, so that was kind of where I get a sense of this flattening of, I just wish that lower part was lower, more present, just a bit more. So, you know, headlights kind of sounds pretty good. Um, Dead Mouse, I thought um, it needed a little more, but I just like a little more bass, so not, not too shocking. And then Use My Voice, this new song by Evanescence, you kind of get a sense of it's a better use of this limited amount of bass. And um, so what's there actually sounds really good, and you don't miss it. It's not like they took all the bass away from the ZSN Pro. There's a little bit less, it's a little faster, but it sounds really good. And I think on that song, I would say it's just a better use of what, what is there. And uh, so again, on the old ZSN Pro, you had this thinner vocals, but it was bassier. It was, there was more underneath. It rumbled better. The ZSN Pro X, you get better vocals, but you don't have all that rumble anymore. Now you just have this clean, fuller vocal. So I think that was the trade-off that they were going to was, we'll bring this down, but we're going to clear up the mids, and we're going to bump the treble a little bit because someone complained about that apparently. But um, so I think they kind of got that right. It's not, it's, it wasn't that bad of a trade-off to have such good vocals, you know, at the expense of knocking the bass down a little bit. But again, it's it's a little tighter, a little faster, so you're not going to miss it nearly as much as it looks like on the graph. Um, so soundstage, kind of similar to the ZST, I think they just cleaned it up a little bit is what I would say. It's just easier to follow. Instrument locations just seem a little more solid than before, and they may not have even tweaked that at all. It's just that's the way it comes across now. But, you know, if you got any I am, do, do take a look at Dead Mouse's Strobe, Where's the Beat Edition? And um, think about where, right in the beginning of the song, where the sound is. It should be right at your ears. And it's kind of a great reference of hear a sound, what it sounds like at your ears. Sometimes you'll hear it right in, right before your ears, inside your ears, and sometimes it's right outside of your ears, but it's usually right at your ears. And then as the strings come in, you'll hear them out front. 
And on the ZSM Pro X, you get this nice sense of space of, you know, you were here right at your ears, and now you have the strings that are kind of out in front of you, and they sort of seamlessly move, you know, inside and outside of your ear. So where it starts off, and you have this hard reference right at your ear, now you you kind of get a sense of what it sounds like for a soundstage to kind of just seamlessly move um, in between those spaces um, and be a little and have some depth as well at the same time. So not not unique to the Pro X, but something that I noticed that sounds just really good on the Pro X. So again, that's, that's kind of my take on the on the Pro X. It's not quite a upgrade to the Pro. It's kind of like it feels like it's its brother or a sibling. It's kind of similar, but not the people who were who really liked the ZSN Pro. I'm not sure. You know, they were really all that eager to clean up the vocals. I think they liked that V-shaped, fun, engaging sound. And to tweak that formula a little bit, um, it it almost doesn't feel like it's the ZSN Pro. And especially when you look at the graph, you're like, well, that's not quite the ZSN Pro. But again, trust me, it, it actually sounds more similar to the, to the original ZSN Pro than it appears. But there's enough difference there that you know, probably a certain class of other listeners who wouldn't have picked up the ZSN Pro at or Pro or the original might be interested. But, you know, at, at some level, I think if you're into that much detail, I think the trouble itself is probably going to trouble you. So that's my take. Um, thanks again for tuning in, and I will see you next time.